G'day viewers, it's Train Simulator Driver here, the man from down under. Right now we're on the other side of the planet in North White Plains, New York. And we're having a look at the New York Harlem White Plains line. Awesome. On our right is the Bud M3A, built last century in the 80s. On our left is the slightly more modern M7A, built by Bombardier in the early 2000s. Both of these trains are drivable in the game, and very populous. They both have great physics, great sound, and a very nice immersive train driving experience. I think it's time to look inside. What do you reckon? Through the magic of teleportation, we're now inside the M3A. Looking around in this thing, there's a really nice patina. It's clean, but worn. It's got a good used feel to it, which is pretty cool, because these cars are kind of old. Now, the decaling suits the error and matches the reference photos that I've seen. And remember, this is an early access version, so yours may look a little bit different. Let's jump in the chair. I've already set this one up ready to go, and we're just going to go for a really quick drive inside this siding. And I'll be quiet while I do that, so that you can hear it. How good does that sound? Hmm. It's a bit like the M3 from LIRR, but there are some important differences. You'll notice on our left here is the new indicator display for your speed and the ATC and access restrictions. I'll cover those when we drive the M7A. We're now inside the M7A, and this one similarly has a nice weathered feel to it. It's not as old as the other ones, so it looks a little bit fresher. And that's quite cool. It's how you, you would expect it to be. There's uh, nice little bits of dirt sprinkled around the place, like on the handrails and on the kickboards, which is great to see. The decals seem to be well placed based on reference photos. And I've actually ridden this train, so I kind of remember it. And I even had some of my own. Let's jump in the chair. Now, we're not going to drive this one because we're going to do it in a moment, but I will turn it on for you. Now, it looks remarkably like the M7 from LIRR. No great surprises there, but it's a little bit different. And the driving safety systems that turn up on the right-hand screen here are totally different to LIRR and so much better. But you'll see that when we go for a drive shortly. Now, I do have to comment on the night lighting on this route. It's the new kind, and I really appreciate it. Really, really good. We're in a city. It is bright. Let's go for a drive. Through yet more video magic, we are now on an M7A, and we're at Woodlawn, and I'm just turning on some safety systems. I've turned on the dead man pedal, I've turned on the alerter, turned on Axis, and turning on ATC. ATC sets the speed limits for your traffic behind other trains. Axis sets the civil limits for curves and bridges and things like that. And the alerter goes off periodically to make sure you're awake. And the dead man pedal, well, that just makes sure you're not dead. Now, we're not actually a stopping service, but I'll probably stop here and there anyway. So we're now taking off from Woodlawn. So how good does that sound? The M7A has become my favourite train and this has become my favourite route which is why I'm really happy to be showing it to you. 
Now, I'm not going to show you the whole thing because, you know, you deserve some surprises. Probably notice from the funny box on the screen that it is rail driver compatible. Now I started at Woodlawn because I wanted to show you the transition from the semi-rural suburban areas with lots and lots of trees to coming into the city. I think the sights along the route match what I've seen from CAD videos very well. And we've just been slowed down by Axis. You will see plenty of other trains as you drive the route. Saxus has slowed me down for that curve. Now this station's really cool. So if you look up there on our right, you'll see this amazing building. Now I'll just leave this train to come to a stop by itself and jump outside. This building actually exists in reality and at Botanical Garden inside you will find the most amazing set of gardens so I've put it on my list for my next trip to New York that's for sure which I'm kind of hoping to manage next year. I just had to jump out and show you that, sorry. <laughs> I'm a little impetuous like that sometimes, as people who watch my channel will know. Now we're going to start transitioning into the cityscape now. Did I mention you'll see plenty of other traffic along the route? Because you will. That was just access letting me know we can go a bit faster now. 75 mile an hour. And this train is a bit like a rocket. It accelerates and brakes superbly. Now just remember this is an early access build, so it may be a little bit different when you finally get your hands on it. And it sh I love these little tiny platforms where only one or two cars can actually fit on them got to be a challenge for the conductors to work out which doors to open. I appreciate the uh, graffiti along the route is toned down and muted because if you watch any cab ride videos of this route or if you visited it personally you will uh, notice that it's not that bright generally. you just saw some freight sprinkled around the place. That was my alerter. Just making sure I'm awake. Am I awake? Yeah, I think so. Oop. Now I have to slow down. And you have to brake hard enough to get the brake assurance rate light to come on. 
and slow down to about a mile below what it wants. Otherwise, it'll give you a lovely penalty break. Now this system's been checked out by a real driver who finds it to be quite an accurate representation. So that is absolutely awesome. Did I mention you'll see lots of trains? It's a really busy route. So when I first heard this route was coming up, I got really excited about it because I love LIRR, but it needs more traffic. And this one brings the traffic because it's got the more advanced signaling system that the more modern version of the game brings. And there's been an enormous amount of work go into this to make it all work properly. Now I've got the HUD on because I just want you to see what's happening with the safety systems. So I would suggest that we are catching up with another train. And remember those penalty brakes I told you about? I just got one because I didn't acknowledge that. That's okay. Well, not really. In theory, we'll be able to go again now. There we go. So the penalty brake isn't hard to get out of. And look at that. The Manhattan skyline coming up. And there's recognisable structures there too, which I really, really appreciate. I love New York. I've spent time there over the last couple of years. I think my first visit was in 2001. And I was there in... Uh, 18 and 19 and I was planning another trip in 20 but we all know what happened so I hope to get back next year this is the Harlem River Bridge quite an amazing structure And while it doesn't do it in the game, this whole structure actually moves up and down to allow river traffic. We're coming up on our next stop, which is Harlem 125th. Texas is letting us go up to 40 mile an hour now. Now I actually love the look and feel of this. This is uh, suburban New York. It really, really feels right to me. And I appreciate the effort that's gone into it. I especially love all the water tanks on top of the buildings because that's just something that you see. And I know a, a local would probably never even see the water tanks. But trust me, from someone who comes from outside, you notice them because they're unusual. I'm supposed to stop a little bit further back, but we won't worry about that, will we? Let's just jump out and go for a quick wander. Hey, this wasn't in the script. Too bad. Let's go have a look. Oop, missed the door. Maybe I should walk, not run. Hello. What do you think of New York? Is it cool? Hmm. That's okay. So the feel as we look around out here, magic. Absolute magic. I have ridden this line. And I fully intend on my next trip 
to drag it on, along a laptop. And guess what? I'm going to drive this while I ride the train. Alright, let's pop back into the train because it's time to go. And we're about to head along the elevated section and then down into the tunnel, down to Grand Central Terminal. All of these lights on the outside of the train all have meanings, which I won't go into here, but they all work and they all do what they're supposed to do, which is really, really cool. Can you tell I really like this route? All right then, let's go. I'll shut up for a little while so you can hear the train properly. Do you know what? Do you know something that really, really helps? Closing the doors. come some of those water tanks I was talking about and the projects So you get access slowing us slowing try that again. You get access slowing you down for the civil restrictions like going through curves and bridges. And ATC might slow you down sometimes because you're catching up with another train and it needs you to keep your distance. So right now we're being slowed down by ATC. We're on a limited, which means we have a 45 mile an hour top speed. And you can tell that from the L in the uh, middle of the display there. So now we've got Axis slowing us down to 45 because we were changing track. And this might seem a lot to learn. And I suppose it is in a little way. But you don't actually have to turn this stuff on until you're used to the route. And I'd suggest that you get used to the route and then start turning on the safety systems to enhance your fun. They really build up stress and anticipation and they bring the immersion level up massively. So I really enjoy turning on the safety systems. And one thing I would recommend is don't get too aggressive on your speeds. Is you need to keep an eye on things. So we're only a little while away from Grand Central now, and I love this tunnel. The texturing is fantastic. The lighting in it is perfect. It's exactly what you see on cab ride videos. And I don't know if you noticed, but the cool thing about this train is passengers can actually sit there if the driver uh, seals themselves into their little compartment. Pay attention to what I'm doing, shouldn't I? That was Axis slowing us down for the corner. Now we're coming up to a 10 mile an hour section. So I'm just going to start drifting my speed down. Because through the last of the tunnels in the uh, caverns of Grand Central, it's restricted to 10.
You probably noticed I don't use the rail driver alerter button or the door buttons. I have a, another device for that. Let's just bring us down to 25 for the moment. That'll be fine. So ATC's brought us down to a medium, which has got a, a 30 top speed. But we're only doing 24, so that's fine for us. And I really strongly is, suggest that the uh, hint of not being too aggressive on your speeds, you really need to hold it back a little if you're running with the safety systems. Or you'll just end up coming to a stop somewhere and having to reset. now in the caverns of Grand Central. Just turn my lights back on to bright because I had them on dim. Now this slow bit through Grand Central is actually a little bit challenging because you've got to keep your speed down. And you're on a slope, quite a steep one in some places. Love the mixture of the old brickwork and the modern concrete on the left. Reacted just a tiny bit there. I think we're coming into the loop track. So let's have a look at the map. Oh, we're going to go into the centre, but you notice there's a big loop. You can go all the way around Grand Central, which is just kind of cool. And there are some services and scenarios that do actually take you around that loop. So you drive in, you don't have to change ends, and you just drive out again. It's fantastic. So while we're cruising through this slow bit, you might wonder why an Aussie is so excited about a New York route. Well, I've visited the city quite a few times and I absolutely love the joint. It's a fantastic city to spend some time in. The transit system is absolutely magnificent. In Melbourne, we're lucky if we get a train every 20 minutes. New York, meh, every four or five in the uh, peak times, rush hour. Other times it's still, still really, really reasonable. And I really enjoyed the LIRR route, but I did realise there was some scope for improvement because the that route was built in the Alter game technology and now we've got much better. And this one, I have to say, really does meet my expectations. I love it. There is so much traffic. There is so much going on. You've got hundreds of services to play. The scenarios are good and they're engaging. It's just heaps of fun and if you haven't thought about getting it I really recommend that you do when you're driving down here in the uh, caverns it can be just a little challenging to figure out which signals apply to you and just as a hint they're the ones on your right so I've got a yellow signal coming up and I'm going uphill now so I have to keep putting on a little bit of power. We're in an ATC restricted zone now, which means 15 mile an hour or less, but the actual speed limit down here is 10. So that's why the HUD's showing two speeds. 
you travel at the lower of the two speeds, which is a really nice implementation of this particular setup. And while I normally drive hudless, I'm still learning this one, and I find I get myself in trouble if I drive without the HUD still, so I'm using it. Alright, we are nearly there. Now you might think Grand Central looks a little bit plain. Well, this part of Grand Central actually does look quite plain in reality. It's just utilitarian. Now, I'd love to say that the beautiful hall is in the game, but unfortunately, it's not. That would have been the uh, that would have been the couple on top of the cake, I guess. But. doesn't affect how much I enjoy the uh, gameplay and how much I enjoy just spending time with this route and I have found it's become my new favorite and I don't really want to admit how much time I've put into it since getting early access because it's kind of a lot now there's a massive massive community involvement in this route from providing reference to checking how things have been built, to providing uh, knowledge about how the train control systems work and how the trains are supposed to behave and react. And they're about as close to reality as Train Sim World 2 can make them. Really, really good. Absolutely enjoy myself on this one. So I have to say thanks to JD and Matt for giving me the opportunity to uh, drive this with the early access version for you today and show it off to you. And, yep, do have to give the standard disclaimer. I did get this for free. But to be honest with you, I'd love it anyway, even if I'd paid for it. So worth it. Really good just about guarantee you'll enjoy it if you like passenger services you're going to really love this one so thanks very much for watching i'm train simulator driver hope to see you on my channel sometime and i put out heaps of tutorials for different things i'll be certainly creating some for this because it's got some challenges and enjoy have fun with the rest of march madness and i hope you uh, find it entertaining and useful bye now